we go. Thank you guys for joining us. Welcome to Outdoor Photos Photocast. <laughs> we're, we're still working things out here. But it is an absolute pleasure to have in the studio with us Clint Ralph. Clint, tell me a little bit about yourself. Who are you, where you came from, where you started? We'll get in, into all of that. But again, just thank you so much for, for joining us. And I'm looking forward to this chat. Absolute pleasure, Gunton. Nice to be here. It's awesome and a great setup you've got going here. Yeah, um, I think my photography all started um, about uh, eight years ago when I was uh, racing motorbikes off-road and motocross and I was breaking bones non-stop and my wife eventually said to me, hey man, you're getting too old to break bones continuously. You need to find a new, a new um, hobby or a new direction for your passion. And I stumbled onto photography through a couple of friends and went out of them, took a few photos and I enjoyed it and uh, got better equipment and uh, with a better equipment the challenges increased and so I got, uh, got more and more into it and um, started going to places instead of just the local ponds and the local rivers to take photos of ducks. And uh, slowly but uh, surely uh, joined the right guys and what I would normally do in the old days was um, when I was a real absolute green amateur. I would find out who the, the top photographers are in the area and then basically just find out where they would go and uh, sit and do their, do their skills and I would go and sit next to them and I didn't want any lessons or anything, I didn't talk to them, just listen to what they were so doing. Observing them. Observe them, observe them, observe them and try and learn a few tricks along the way and they would pull pranks on me and as I'd leave <laughs> to go to the toilet they'd change my settings and I'd have no clue what, <laughs> what they <laughs> did and everybody would have a good a good chuckle at the screen <laughs> amateur but slowly over time I, I got the knack of it and i started learning a little bit more about photography and uh, then i started traveling a little bit more and i got went to some really cool places and interesting places and um yeah it photography let me travel the world uh, which is absolutely fantastic it's a great passion it's a great uh, life and it's a it's, it's a great hobby it's a real wholesome hobby. It's really super people i think it's one of the things that i really enjoy about spending time with you is there's a this this thirst for adventure that i have myself and that i find in in you as well that yeah. as you mentioned now it, it takes you places i mean you've yeah. been up into Africa, you've been abroad, you've been all over the country and capturing incredible images up yeah. the Drakensberg. <coughs> I mean, thank you, thanks to you. I also yeah. ended up there in the in the mountains. Yeah, yeah. No, it, 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 I think I think um, to get the right shot or to get the shot because there's thousands of cameras taking photos every day, every hour. So you really got to work a lot harder now in these this day and age to get to stand out. You got to work pretty hard to get that shot that makes you just lifts you to the next level. And with that comes travel. The harder the the, 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 the task to get that shot, the, the more satisfaction I get. It's not always um, people don't always appreciate that. You know, you get a shot that you took. Uh, you were sat in one place for three three days waiting for that one shot, and you eventually get it. You post it, and guys say, "Yeah, it's a cool photo." <laughs> and then you get another <laughs> lucky you, shot. You have no idea <laughs> yeah, what I went through to get this image. And then you get another shot that's really cool and all that, and it's, but it's, it was an easy shot. It wasn't a difficult shot. And everybody goes mad. Um, <laughs> now, a great example would be Johnny Walker. Um, I don't know. It, 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 the one image that sort of launched my career and got me interested and got me focused in really trying a bit harder. I was up in the Darkensburg with some mates, and we were in a hide, and we'd been sitting in that hide for about three days. It's tiny. It's the size of a small bathroom. You can't leave it unless you need to, desperately need to go to the toilet. But you're sitting there for three days and you wait for the birds and the raptors and that to, to come along. And yeah, that, that's for the, the bearded vulture hide in Charles That's Scotland. correct, yes. Yeah, they're okay. very, very yeah. endangered bearded vulture. So you go there and you get some really cool shots of the bearded vulture. But part of that is there's a lot of other raptors. There's uh, rock kestrels and there's jackal buzzards and there's uh, a, a white-backed vultures and cape vultures and... Uh, even on occasion, black eagles, blue eagles. So it's a really cool place to go, and it's it's super high. It's 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 soulful. You go up there, and you're alone on top of a cliff, and the the, the absolute vista is just magnificent. And then these big airships come gliding past. It's just it's you can't explain until you've been and, and actually felt it. And I I saw a jackal buzzard coming in, and um, they come in fast. They come in very fast. They come in fast, and they screech as they come in to warn that they're coming in, and they land and. It's difficult to get the shot to, of them because they're small and they're fast. And they, they are super fast. That's it. And I, I 
I picked him up in my lens. In those days, he was using the old DSLR, so they were a lot slower, and the focusing wasn't as good as it is today. And uh, I managed to lock onto him, and I kept him in, in, in frame, and he landed, and uh, I pulled up a string of shots. And um, I thought, oh, those are going to be some good shots, and off we carried on ph photographing the rest um, for the rest of the day. And that evening, uh, when I got back to camp, I was just scrolling through the images that I that I taken that day, and that particular image popped up, and I thought, wow, this is just something. He looks like an old butler or soldier marching towards me, straight at, straight at me, and he looked well, it's such purpose. And that image, when I posted that, it went viral. That thing's been edited to the wazoo. Hundred percent. Something like panda, something panda. A yeah, board panda. Board yeah. panda. I mean, I was yeah. in the top ten percent or something. Board panda. I was, I, was, I was ranking right at the top. They had uh, Vladimir Putin riding this thing. They had, uh, oh, the um, uh, what is that? Uh, Braveheart on it. Uh, they, they just went mad with it. Uh, it, it. The memes around that photo was in insane. It's awesome. But it was exciting, and and yeah. I think that was what sort of really cut my passion and got me into this whole thing. You mentioned earlier about how you kept on going out to some of these places. I know that um, there was quite a lot of excitement involved in one of your, I think it's one of your personal top shots, where you persevered to get to a shot of the lioness and the cubs. Mm. Tell us a little bit about this shot. So there's a there's a incredible, absolutely incredible uh, lodge in uh, Zululand uh, in South Africa. And uh, one of the, the, the sort of features is a overnight hide that you sit at eye level with the water, with the water and, and, and the, the, the um, water hole, and you s they drop you off there at about four o'clock in the afternoon. And again, it's a tiny little place, and it's you got to sort of bend over to get down to your seat, and you'll, they'll pick you up again the next day at about eight nine o'clock. So you spend a good a uh, good twelve fourteen hours down there in underground, and. Um, I've been going there for years, and I go there multiple times. And I, my shot I keep trying to get is a cat at the water, drinking water in front of me. Now, you must remember the water, the edge of the water is probably 10 meters from my lens. So if you get that shot, and I mean, when you get elephants coming there, you big wide-angle lens, and you just, just get them in, and you get the perspective looking up this beautiful beast is just, it, 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 it's indescribable. And I've been going for, uh, I don't know how many years, trying to get this lion or a leopard. At the, well, I got hyenas and I got buffalo and I got rhino and elephant and antelope and nyala, everything but cats, <laughs> the long teeth. I couldn't get a long tooth. And um, I was there last year with a, with a client. I had some clients that I took there. And um, that night we were sitting there and I said to, said to my clients, now listen, no cell phones, no talking in the front. We, there's lion in the area. The chances are we could get a visit tonight. But please, they, if you, they see the light <laughs> of the cell phone, we're done. And people are under the, the, the impression that those hides are soundproof or something. Nah. I mean, I've, I've heard horrific stories coming yeah. from yeah. people coughing and sneezing and yeah. burping and screaming yeah. and whatever in those hides. And you lose the shot. I mean, I had a, a situation now, that same trip, where um, – it was middle of the night, and we had this beautiful, beautiful uh, herd of zebra coming to drink, and it was full moon, and the the uh, it would have been one of the most spectacular shots I've taken of a zebra drinking with that black and white uh, bodies against the black background and the reflection in the water. It was it was ma the making of a it was a money shot, and my client ended up getting excited, and she spoke, and they just all of them gapped it out of there, and they didn't get the shot, not a single shot. <laughs> And I just shook my head. I thought, wow, you know, that, that was a lost opportunity. Anyway, back De to the lines. Death by DSLR. Oh, man, I tell you what. <laughs> so I said to them, please, guys, there is a good opportunity tonight. We're going to see a line. And um, so what happens is people, you get tired because you're sitting there staring into space and there's nothing. And you're waiting for somebody to come along. Um, and we would take turns sleeping in, uh, in the back. And I said to my client, okay, sit here. And you watch while I go make coffee for us because I'm trying to stay awake and make coffee. And while I'm in the back making coffee, the client comes screaming through, there's a lioness, there's a lioness in the vicinity. He's just seen it. So I said, oh, fantastic. Ran back in the front, now we're waiting. And I can see her far in the background, but she's still quite far off and um, there's no shot. And she moves forward, moves forward, and she gets into a little, a little sort of uh, hollow. And all you can see is her eyes 
sticking up and she's looking but there's still I could have shot of, got the shot just in case she never comes to the water nice shot and the next minute and I'm thinking okay this is it this is it please lord this is it <laughs> and the next minute a big massive buffalo bull a big dugger boy comes in and they they're pretty fearless and it just chases that lioness away and I can you believe this my one time, I've been waiting for like five or six years for that, the shot. That one time. And this buffler, and it goes and stands right in front of the window in our lenses, and it just stands there, stands guard. Lines are gone, and the buffler in front of us. No shot of the buffler, no shot of the lines. Stood there for 30 minutes, and I'm thinking, you've got to be kidding me. This could not have happened. Anyway, after a while, you feel like you can run out there and go and slap this thing on its ass because you just wanted to get out of there. After a while, it... It wanders off in it. Old, old Afrikaans or uh, South African proverb. Tsek. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So <laughs> off the buffalo went. So I'm sitting there and I'm thinking, I, I, I can't believe what just happened. The, the opening was there and this thing just chased them all away. And about an hour later, out of the blue, I've looked there and coming up from the bottom from the river towards us is a lioness. The same lioness coming up again. And she comes up and she very carefully walks up to the water right in front of me, straight in front of me. And she lays down and she starts drinking. And I'm thinking, there's my shot. Oh. Shot I've been waiting for all these years. I finally got my long tooth. Got magnificent shots of her. And my clients went nuts. And everybody was absolutely over the moon. Off it, she it, went. But job done. Job Tick. done. Tick got the it. box. Got done. it. Finally done. got it. Off it goes. And we're all in celebration. And I go make some more coffee. And I come back. And about a half an hour after the line has left, she comes back with her, with her, her sister. And she comes back two lionesses with two cubs, but tiny, tiny little cubs yeah. in tow. And the four of them came to the water to drink. Now that is just, well, let me tell you something. You, you, you just, you, you can't even talk. I mean, I can't even talk now thinking about it. it the, the excitement and the adrenaline and the sense of achievement is just, you, can, you can't wait to show your family and your wife and your friends. I, I finally got this. Look at these animals. Up here. And you're right in front of them. And they, at eye level, it's, it's, you can't describe it. But that's exactly the thing about having to go out there and having to persevere. Yeah. In it, it's not that you're lucky. Yeah. You're spending a lot of time there. Yeah. Yeah. And that's one of the things that I've picked up on you is your time management is remarkable. Yeah. You're spending a lot of time at family. You're spending yeah. a lot of time at work. And you're spending a lot of time out there. But when you're out there, you are absolutely focused on getting that shot. Yeah. Um, it, it, one of the great memories that I have was us being in Giants Castle saying, listen, we, we driven five hours to get here. It's going to take us 15 minutes to get up there to see if we can take photographs of the stars or not. Yeah. And I was still pitching this whole idea and you had the car keys in your hands. You're yeah. ready to go. go. You're always keen to go out and go and try something. Yeah and try and persevere to get that shot. You have to. I mean, everything in life. I mean, with family, you've got to give it everything you've got because it's that precious. Your know, family, your, your wife, your, my two boys, it's, it's that precious to me. And so when I'm there, I give them everything I have, my absolute everything. At my work, I have a, a, a waste management company and uh, we do a lot of uh, recycling and we look after the environment in, in essence. And uh, we built an incredible business, and we I give it everything. But when I play and I go on safari, I you play give hard. give it everything. And I give it 12 hours. I sleep and I get home again. I, if I'm there six days, a week, two weeks, I'm in the bush all day, every day, the whole day. Um, and if I can get out at night, I'm there through the night as well. So you only get so many chances in life. Um, and yes, uh, I agree with you. You've got to spend time, and you've got you to persevere, and you've got to perseverance, and you've got to... Have, you know, you just got to sit it through, and there's a lot of there's a lot of downtime, a lot of boredom, waiting for that shot. But there's also an element of luck. But if you're not out there, there's no luck. Yeah. So you got to be out there, to, and then you get the lucky shot. So um, it's time in it's time behind the lens. You got to spend time behind the lens, um, and that's how you make your own luck. Talking about uh, spending time behind the lens and and the equipment. I mean, you've obviously gone from amateur level. <laughs> <laughs> and you sent through some of the images and we're going to post them up on this podcast where y these were your some of your first shots. Yeah. I mean, like Johnny Walker yes. or whatever. It, my first shots didn't look like that. Yeah. But regardless, <laughs> we're moving on to a new era in photography with mirrorless. And you've gone through this transition now where it, it's taken a while and, and 
we've gone through some of the teething processes, mm -hmm. but what has your experience been like in terms of going from DSLR to mirrorless? Yeah. Well, first of all, I think the timing of the, the mirrorless from Canon <laughs> was perfect for me <laughs> because when I was younger, uh, eight years ago, I had a fast eye and a fast trigger finger and I could, I could use the equipment and I could pick up the birds in flight, birds in flight and a cheetah racing across the, the plains at 100 k's an hour. I was able to still manage to pull off the shots. You'd mm. miss a lot of shots. That's, that's a given. You'd miss a lot of shots. But I was able to get a lot of good shots there. And as it, it, the equipment progressed and focusing improved, and focusing, it, 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 it allowed for me as I got older and, 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 and not as fast as I used to be to keep up. So uh, the timing was great. But however, the, 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 the advancement in technology is it's astronomical. I mean, if I'm thinking how fast it's come in the last two years, what is the next five years going to be? I mean, it's, it's just, it's just, it's it, in, it it's is insane. It, it is. is. It's frightening uh, that how quickly it's, it's moving. I mean, now um, I went and tested when I first got the first DS, uh, first mirrorless. It was the R, I think. Yeah. Am I right? The R. Yeah. I don't even know these. It was the R, and it it, it lagged and it, it I battled a little bit with them, but it was it was good for landscapes. And I was like, okay, well, it's a nice camera for landscapes. So it's got a lot of advantages for when you're doing landscape shooting. But I'll stick to my One DX Mark III. That's like was for me a great camera, and. Um, then I got the, uh, through you, I got the R5. R5, yeah. Yeah, the R5. Game changer. Game changer. Fit on that, that 400 uh, 2.8 lens, um, went to a, a, a bank of, of um, bee eaters where they were nesting, and it was just bee eaters back and forth like crazy. And these they're busy birds, and they, they remind me of, of, of Spitfires, the, the aeroplane. They fly in every direction. They're like fighter jets. They're like fighter pilots. <laughs> they fly. They, there's chaos. no pattern. That's it. There's no it's pattern with those birds. It's pretty chaos. It's complete chaos. So to follow one is so difficult because they up, down, back, forth, uh, towards, and, and they're fast. And I thought, well, let me go test this R5 and this lens out now. And I sat there for a morning, probably two hours. All I had to do was get the burning frame. That's it. The rest of the work was done by the camera. The focus that, that hits that focus and grabs it so tightly and so quickly that put the burning frame and you got the shot. And it's 99 insane. out of the 100 shots I would take, 99 would be razor sharp, as in razor sharp. Fast bird, low light, morning light, <laughs> just as the sun comes over. I'm shooting at 2.8, 3.5, that sort of thing. Low light, slow shutter speed, and it just bang, bang, bang. It just... Nailed it. On point. Incredible. Absolutely incredible. I think the, the big thing is, and I have to give a lot of credit to you here as well, although you've got this equipment and it is making life a lot easier, mm. you still need to know your subject. You need yeah. to get out there and take the shots. Yeah. You need to understand what you're doing with yeah. the equipment. Yeah, uh, uh, that's true. I mean, uh, you're only as good as... Uh, well, you've got to understand your animals and you've got to understand your subject, be it whatever it might be, be it in the Drakensberg with those inversions, a cheetah running across the plains, you know when he's going to launch a bird, when it's going to take off and that sort of thing and, and what, what they do. So you've got to understand your subject and you've got to understand your equipment uh, relatively well because in wildlife photography, things happen fast. There's no time to reset and readjust and change the aperture and change the shadows. You've got to make it happen quick and it happens in a split second. Yes. It's done. Sorry, I missed that shot. Wh what happened? You know. <laughs> You better know. I was look, well. looking at my camera. Yeah. What did I miss? What did I miss? Exactly. So, and on that point, that's that's an interesting point. So this particular image was a top 100 finalist in the um, Smithsonian, uh, not Smithsonian, in the um, um, the BB, BBC, BBC uh, yeah. Wildlife Photograph of the Year. Um, it, and it, it is a fantastic photo it's of a leopard. And so we were sitting on our on our truck on our safari vehicle, all of the myself and all the clients. And the leopard came from the front, and I was on the back seat, and she came from the front walking, and we got some amazing shots, really, really nice shots of her. We were doing some bit dropping it down on, on, a, on a monopod, so we get some eye-level shots and nice perspective. And as she walked past the, the vehicle, everybody stopped, and they all got excited, and they got these amazing shots in the spotlight, and it really was, there were some tremendous shots to be had. Everyone was excited. But nobody, and my point here is that don't stop watching your subject because you never know what's going to do next. And I, I was the only one in the vehicle that followed it and kept watching it. And when she went behind me, 
there was another vehicle that lit up from the side and the dust coming from her paws and the spotlight and the blackness around I got the most amazing shot and no one even saw the shot let them took it this is an incredible shot I know it, yeah. it is absolutely beautiful so and it's you know don't don't look at the back of your screen you can do that when you get home take the shots watch the animals and 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 work it work the situation as much as you can yeah you can always look at the images when you get home or Absolutely. back to the room or wherever yeah, yeah. But when you're out there get work the it. shot first that's it yeah that's it. it it just fascinates me how many people do get lost on their equipment yeah and that's why we try and spend so much time with people and and working out what they need how to and we we recommend to people get used to your equipment as yeah. well you're quite involved with tusk photo safaris as well yes. if i'm not mistaken best so outfit in the country it's and that's something that brendan kramer mentioned in a workshop mm -hmm. and i always advise <coughs> people when you get out there try and get into workshops as often as possible yeah. if you're getting into photography yeah. and you might sit in a guy's workshop for an hour and the guy hasn't taught you anything you've heard and learned nothing out of that whole experience yeah. and then right at the end he drops one thing and it changes everything for you I, I couldn't agree more now Brendan mentioned in a workshop you need to know your equipment when you are sitting in the dark you should be able to operate your camera yeah and I think that makes a difference as well I mean you are very accustomed to your equipment you we've spent a lot of time discussing yeah. this stuff and working out what's going to work best for you yeah. and the layout of the camera but you yeah. still need to know your equipment you have to uh, just just coming back to brendan and tusk um, first of all i mean tusk tusk photo safaris are absolutely phenomenal what makes them special for me because i am quite energetic and you mentioned this earlier um, i have a lot of energy i need to be out there all the time so when i go to tusk we work hard we work as hard as we possibly can and they're not the kind of outfit that says okay we're better we've been an hour's drive let's go back home and have breakfast no no let's go out we had to take photos and we're going to spend the day out there taking so much so that they would bring our food to us which is <laughs> you know no, but that's what you want and that's why I'm that's there. why those safaris i'm not there for breakfast no i'm there to take photos so exactly. bring me my lunch while i'm in the bush while i'm working yeah. um and on your point with brendan and and doesn't matter how good you are you know don't get arrogant and think you can't learn um, go and attend this course, no matter how accomplished of a photographer you are, go and attend, because you may pick up one thing that you've forgotten, or you may pick up something that you never knew of. You know, so the technology's changing all the time. These guys are working those cameras all the time. Attend those courses. They do, they, 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 they're useful. They really are. Yeah. And uh, again, uh, this is starting to sound like an ad for task photo, but something that I also picked up is those guys take you out and they position you to get the shot. They're 100%. there to assist you. <coughs> They're not there to get yes. the shots for themselves. themselves. No, not at all. I mean, uh, all. Brendan returned from one of the, the safaris and I was quite excited to yeah. see his images. And he yeah. said, no, he shot maybe 10 shots or whatever, yeah. but he, was, he had a busy group, so he, yeah. was, he was busy. He was they quite got involved. the shots. They got the shots. That's I mean, that's where it all started. Yeah. I saw some of the shots yeah. from those clients. Yeah, I was like, I can't wait for Brendan's shots. Yeah. And yeah, it yeah, Brendan they, didn't shoot it. They are a great outfit. So one of the things <coughs> that you also that you also touched on is obviously going out there and being energetic and mm. going maximum and everything. And and I want to touch on that specifically because you've been exercising quite a lot and the benefits of being fitter. Even though you're on the back of a safari vehicle, I mean, yeah. you're handling big equipment, you're out there, you're getting up early hours, you're, you're very... Act How has getting involved in sports improved your photography? Well, up until recently when I've been really pushing it on, on the training side, um, it, it prevents you getting that fatigue. So you may be out there and on the back of a safari vehicle chasing over the savannah, you get bumped around a lot. I mean, your body takes a hammering. It really takes a beating. And the fatigue does sitting, and you get tired, and you're not as driven and as focused as you could be if you were stronger. And, I mean, our trip to the Drakensberg, when we had a hike, uh, I don't know, we hiked up 3,500 <laughs> metres. It was far, and it was rugged, and it was the raining. And yeah, and it was raining. Very was little wind. oxygen. <laughs> no oxygen. One Donovan. That's it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we love you, Donovan. The view. <laughs> He's famous. Right? But yeah, it, it, it just gives you that much more energy and so that you can go a little bit further than the next guy. So I never want to be in a position where 
I'm too tired to get up and go and take the shot, or I'm too tired to concentrate to get the shot as that cheetah launches, or that uh, something gets brought down. Loki FOMO. Good <laughs> <laughs> job. Yeah. So uh, I, I need to make sure that I'm optimum and I'm out there and I'm as as, as uh, driven as the next guy. I don't want somebody to be have more energy than me or more uh, focus than me or more passion it, than me. It makes sense. If if you want to get the shots, then you have to get out there and you have to Absolutely. go and get the shots. It doesn't Absolutely. help you go on your safaris. Yeah. And the only thing that you can think of is getting back to, to having a nap or yeah. getting back into bed. And there's guys that do that. They go, they go in the morning and then they're down in the afternoon drive because they're too tired. Or they go in the afternoon because they want to sleep in in the mornings. Wow, guys, you're only there for a couple of days. Make the best of it. Yeah, that's not what you're there for. No. Clint, um, tell me a little bit about where people can have a look at more of some of your work. Um, you're selling your work as wall art as well. Yes. Where, where yes. can we link up? to your sites and, right. and so so i have a few sites the one is on fa two on facebook the one is just clint ralph um on facebook and the other one is clint ralph photography is those two sites on facebook um i have an instagram site um clint ralph underscore sa you can see me there and then we've got a new uh, project we've just launched with an american company at um yes i'd like to talk about that yeah so it's called endangered mints um and what it is we started it off um i took a client on safari for about two weeks and he had the time of his life and he went back to the states phoned me back said listen um we've got a company there we've launched to sell images and we'd like you to be the photographer on it and we give you shielding in a company so i have shares in that company and we're going to give 50% of all revenue we, we uh, achieve on this NFT uh, platform. 50% will go to Nature Conservation. And they asked me to nominate a good cause. Who's a good outfit that's looking after? And I spoke to Vim from Tusk, who's a very um, uh, a fan of all these different conservation. There's a lot of guys out there that do it for the wrong reasons. And we, we nominated a, a, a organization called Saving the Survivors. And they... they Focus mainly on on saving rhinos that have been poached and that have been a horn chopped off for, um, and they do an incredible job. But they also do elephants and lions, and they focus on looking after wild animals um, and conservation. And um, we nominated them, and there's another another Katie Katie Holmes in um, in the states. Uh, there's, a, there's a crew there that they they uh, support. So. All of the funds that we sold, and it's a platform for top photographers. So we now have started off with just two of us. Now um, there are a number of top photographers. We've got 10 of them. There's Vim van der Heeven from Tusk, uh, Brendan from Tusk. Um, there's a whole lot of other guys from Tusk and from all over the world. So we have 10 top photographers worldwide that are world-renowned um, on this platform. And they all put f images forward that people can buy through the NFTs. Um, in endangermints.io and um, there's different levels so in, in, a, in a nutshell people buy them they own them so I give them ownership of my image they have complete and total ownership and do whatever they want with it and uh, the bulk of the income from it goes to conservation which we we're very excited about we've already done our first uh, payment across and uh, the conservation guys were over the moon and um, so it's it's now taking my photography to a level where I'm putting back into the into the environment. I'm paying for people to look after the wildlife that my kids one day I want to, them to, well, to experience. Be able to enjoy not it. in a book, not in a movie, not in a, a documentary. I want them to be able to see a lion or a rhino or an elephant in the wild in its natural habitat, and that's important to to all of us. Um, that's why we are now driving this to try and support these incredible organizations that put their life on the, on the line to save these rhinos and yeah. to save the, the wildlife. Just give us that website again. It's endangeredmints.io um, or endangeredmints.com. Okay, we'll yeah. post all of that on the on the subject line and in yeah. the descriptions for the yeah. guys who are interested to go and have a look. Yeah. If there are any viewers that uh, would like to purchase one of those um, uh, NFTs of yours, yeah, um, they can just link it up. I believe you've also started incorporating or working with uh, the, the the guys from Tusk of him and yes, Brendan yes, I'm a guard on a on a on a casual basis. So okay, when they have an overrun, what what is next on the on the menu for you? All right, I've got a very exciting trip coming up with uh, Vim and I are going to Amboseli in Kenya. Yeah. And there's an elephant there that's probably one of the biggest tuskers, the last of the, the mega tuskers 
in the world is roaming free. His name is Craig. This guy's tusks almost touch the ground. He is magnificent. Yeah. He had a brother called Tim, which died a couple of years back from old age. Craig's well on his way to that point now. Very so we thought, let's get up there quickly and get the last shots of him. And the shot we're looking for is him walking across a dusty uh, lake, bed, dry uh, lake bed with Kilimanjaro in the background. So you'll have yeah. this massive elephant, Craig, walking towards you. We'll be on the ground shooting up. Um, shooting in the face of this elephant, Kilimanjaro in the background, dust coming up from his feet, hopefully throwing a bit of dust in oh. the air. It's the money shot. Um, and that's <laughs> going to be what I think, if we get that shot, that's going to be one of the shots I've been waiting for for a very, very long time. So it, wish it, us luck. It, I will do all of that. <laughs> I wish you fully charged batteries and lots of memory card space. Um, Clint, thank you again for joining us. I, I, it's such a pleasure and an honor to know you and be friends with you yeah. and be able to share some of these adventures with you. Yeah. Um, we're looking forward to it and we're looking forward to the images from Embassy. Yeah. Um, guys, I'd like to thank you very much for joining us on the show and listening to it, looking at it. Um, thank you very much. See us next time.